Hi everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, I would like to talk to you about um, spirit guides and angels and all of the ones that watch over us. And we sometimes really need to know that we're not alone because we all go through periods where we don't know that there's anybody there. So I brought my notes and let's talk about the higher powers and we'll go all the way from God to the loved ones that you know we've lost that that still watch over us. So um, <clears throat> the first is of course God, the higher power, whatever you want to call that higher power or the highest power. And um, and then there are cherubs who you know depending on your belief system and your religion of course who sit at the foot of God. Uh, there's the high the the nine hierarchy of angels um, and the bottom tier is the archangels and those are the ones that we talk about the most when it comes to angels um, and I believe that you know when you need someone you know who to call it's very good to know that so for instance the most talked about archangel is Michael I would say I could be wrong but I think it's Michael and he is about bravery and courage, strength, will, determination, very, very stubborn angel. And when we need those qualities, that's who we call. And most of us know that, but then there are many other archangels and depending on your religion will depend on how many there actually are. There's a lot of a lot of different schools of thought on that, a lot of arguments, I guess. But, you know, I don't think that's that important. You know, if there's a spirit there that's wanting to help and assist humanity, then, you know, I don't, I don't, I just appreciate that they're there, right? So, <clears throat> among the Archangel list, and I won't go through it, but I mean, there's a lot. If you're on my um, Patreon account, there uh, is a list that I posted of of these this exact list actually this is just a printout of that list and so that you're able to do a little bit of study on your own or you can look at that list and I'm just gonna say this um, if you need healing um, you know Uriel and uh, Raphael they're both very good um, but Everyone, just like saints, is a patron of something. So just going down the list without, you know, too much verbiage here. Um, Ariel is the patron angel of wild animals, manifestation, abundance, and good luck. Azrael is for compassion, peace, transition, and comfort. The patron say angel of the clergy so that would be my angel but i don't usually uh i don't usually call on azrael maybe i should have when i had the church <laughs> archangel kim meal um patron angel of all who love god the angel of peace and calmness patron angel of all who work in the field of communications and postal workers and the clergy is Gabriel. Haniel is the angel of feminine support. Jeremiah is the angel of emotional healing. Jophiel is the angel of beauty, the patron angel of artists. Metatron is the patron angel of children. Archangel Michael, the patron angel of protection and courage, the angel of law enforcement and the military. Ragiel is the relationship angel. See, these are all good to know, right? So if you are in need of creating harmony or resolving conflicts, you would call on Ragiel. Raphael is the patron angel of all those in the field of medicine. So that is a healing angel. Raziel 
He is a patron angel of lawmakers and lawyers. Sandalphon is also meaning the Greek. Uh, in, in Greek, it's the twin brother. And, it, and Sandalphon is the twin brother of uh, Metatron. They carry, uh, Sandalphon carries human prayers to God, so they may be answered, and also a patron angel of music. So praying through Sandalphon really is not a bad idea. Uriel is the angel of literature and music. So you have quite a lot of angels um, for the arts. And then Zadkiel means the righteousness of God. And he is the angel of freedom, benevolence, mercy, patron angel of all who forgive. So there you go. You can read more about that. There's, there's a little paragraph about each one on my uh, patron account, but you could also um, just look them up. I, I think I've just found them on the internet somewhere anyway, many years ago. So let's go a little further down the tier and talk about um, ascended masters and they would look after ascended masters and they are um, loved ones who have um, have taken on human form at least one time and they don't have to return that would include Jesus Mary Buddha Saint Germain um, many many others and if they do come in human form it's just here to um, you know, to support us and assist us in, in whatever way that we need it. So, um, and even if, you know, we don't believe in some of these entities, the truth is that even if they didn't exist, they do now because we gave them power with our thoughts. We have manifested that energy. So you can still call on them. All right. Because I can't swear every deity and goddess that we have spoken of actually does exist or did exist but they do now so that's fine and and that takes me into ascended masters um the saints and the deities deity figures of gods and goddesses on all different levels so many cultures egyptian there are um, hindu just almost every culture has um deities gods and goddesses okay so those are we'll let you study on that because i'm not as well versed in that as a spiritualist um i don't think that that is other than the buddha i don't think that we really resonate with um uh, with those and then the next tier would be guardian angels <clears throat> guardian angels are there's supposed to be two of them for each person one stands on in the back of each shoulder and i will say this that it is has been said that they are usually brother and sister. I don't know. I don't know. It's a nice story though. And they are there to protect your physical well-being. Like it, they'll keep you from getting on that airplane that's going to go down and it's not your time. Uh, you've heard of people falling down steps and just like, well, we're, we're just like somebody almost pulled them by the key. And, you know, a miracles happen every day. But there are situations where people will say, that was divine, divine intervention. Very well could have been, very well. And um, we don't usually develop personal relationships with them. We just, we're just grateful that they are watching our back, literally, right? So the next one would be spirit guides. Now, as I said, I'm coming from a place of spiritualism and you know, like chakras, they say that there's thousands of little vortexes in your body of energy points, but we only ever talk really about the seven major ones in that, that correspond to the endocrine system. It's very much like that with spirit guides. I think that you might have a spirit guide for everything, right? But in spiritualism, there's basically seven um, that we talk about most, maybe, maybe, maybe an eighth, but I want to talk about that traditionally. And if it doesn't resonate with you that's fine it's not a problem at all um, but let me go over these the the gatekeeper is the first one I'm going to talk about now probably the most well-known you've heard of that you, you you've probably heard of the gatekeeper they're the protectors 
and they're a little different than guardian angels. Um, gatekeepers actually um, protect your uh, more of your emotional security uh, and your well-being by keeping negative uh, forces away from you. So that includes people here. That includes entities on the other side. That can even be like your negative thought processes, you know. So they're very protective of you and they help you take chances when you need to take a chance. So sometimes I'll see a, a, a gatekeeper uh, guarding someone where they're just enveloping them with bubble wrap, you know, so that you're safe to move forward and take a chance. You're well protected. If you have to go in and really confront someone, you know, it's almost like they're playing referee, I guess, but they're on your side. The only thing is like, you could say something like, well, if I've got a protector, where the heck were they last Tuesday? Well, um, if last Tuesday there was a situation that you agreed upon before birth, that was a karmic life lesson, they're not really allowed to interfere. But if it got out of hand, then your guardian angels would step in. Um, you know, but it, it just depends on the contract, you know, but you signed, I promise you, you signed on the dotted line. So in any way, in any case, so the gatekeeper is here more for your spiritual well-being and your um, emotional well-being. <clears throat> so the messenger, now, there is one called the runner, but I think the messenger is like the supervisor of the runner. And like one of the angels that we just spoke of, uh, sends your prayers up. You know, maybe they're related, but a messenger is the one that carries your messages to the appropriate place, I guess, like, like a male person, um, you know, to process, you know, your letters. <laughs> So they're very eager to uh, assist humans, from what I understand. They're constantly on the move. And, um, you know, you can form a bond with this spirit guide. You don't have to need, you just don't need to know names all the time. Trust me. Um, you can call them whatever you want. You can make the names up. Don't forget your imagination game plays a role in this. And, uh, you know, so make sure that you're, indulging in your imagination because that was a tool that God has given to, gifted us and a lot of times our intuitions start with imagination and they it turns out to be true so getting off course here sorry so um make sure that like when you're praying I mean I believe we have a direct line to God that's not a problem but perhaps we're sending prayers about something that really needs to also go to one of the archangels for instance for whatever purpose you know that they're a patron patron angel of um, the messenger will make sure that it gets to all parties um, the doctor of philosophy I like this one because they they watch over your moral compass they make sure that you change your perspective if it needs to happen like putting your feet in somebody else's shoes so that for a day so you understand what's going on they also, if you're overthinking things, uh, you know, they, they sort of help you level out emotionally, um, but they, they help you with the right and wrong. They deliver truth to you. So sometimes when we're really confused, it's the doctor philosophy that will step in and help you look at certain things a different way. Um, they, they sometimes that is in the form of life lessons though. And so I like this guy, but you know, the life lessons are not always easy, are they? In any case, he's a very, very important spirit guide on your council. The doctor of health is another one that's very major because um, they can help you with emotional support as well, but a lot of it's for your physical well-being um, and your well-being, but your well-being in general. Um, it's an interesting guide because they have stronger bonds with people that in healthcare healthcare workers, um, caregivers, and, uh, and energy workers, light workers, healing channels. So if you do Reiki or something like that, you probably have a very strong bond with your, um, with your doctor of health. Um, but they're all there for us to 
um, do better with our lives or stay on track. Maybe it's, you know, you, you, you need to, if you're starting a new diet regimen or nutrition changes, you know, they're there really like almost like a personal coach, right? That's probably the best way I could see it. Um, so when you're feeling alone because like nobody in the house is supporting your new diet, Trust me, your doctor of health is there, right there. And, you know, maybe even giving the other ones in the house a kick in the tush. I don't know. So, um, so you, when you develop relationships with your guides, uh, which is about meditation and, and things like that, I think that once you know who does what, whether you have names for them or not, then you can call on an energy and you know you're not alone okay and uh that would include you know the patron you know we didn't even talk about the saints but you know in, in if you're a catholic or a christian and or well catholic if you believe in the saints and even if you're not i mean i've called on many of saints i have a, a medal that i carry from the patron saint of cancer and I can't even pronounce their name, to be honest with you. So, but but I feel close to that. I mean, the little talisman doesn't never hurt, right? <laughs> um, in any in any case, I want to go on to the next one is the um, the joy guide. The joy guide is an interesting little character, and I say little because they usually present themselves as children or youth. Um, they're very energetic. They play tricks on us, like hard, hide your car keys, you know, and, and that's not always funny. You know, when you look in the same place twice and the third time it shows up, right? They're there to add levity to your life. When a joy guide shows up, it's usually because you're taking life a little too seriously. Um, and we don't know who we're working with at the moment. When, when, I have a, when I do a reading and somebody says, do I have a spirit guide? Well, of course, everybody has them. Um, but the only ones that will step forward for me are the ones that are working with you like right now. So if you're going through a tough time in life where you're really, you know, full of worry and stress, you know, it might be the joy guide that I'm seeing. All right. So they're just there for a reminder. They can't do anything really about it except to remind you to calm down because, you know, it, it's, it's pointless, you know, so they're kind of, they kind of have a Buddha attitude about it. It's like, if you, you can't do anything about it then worrying doesn't help so um so they can be a young person of either well spirit person of either gender um sometimes i see them as kind of non-binary um but they're eager to serve us and uh, the master teacher which is i th i think one of the most important guides because that really is sort of the keeper of the karma Maybe they work with Metatron because Metatron is known to hold the Akashic records. But the master teacher will bring you lessons of all kinds, but they also, I mean, grade your paper. And what happens if you fail a test? You know, you are more apt to repeat the class, right? Well, um, your master teacher also lets you know when you know, you've graduated and then you can move on. There will always be challenges but there'll be different challenges. So if you have an unhealthy pattern or no, and, and I think you can recognize this in someone else than more than yourself. That's just the way that is the perspective of, you know, looking out, but someone that has a, an unhealthy um, habit of, you know, of any kind really, but perhaps maybe choosing the wrong partner all the time, or, you know, and, and someone that has a type and it's never a good uh, fit. Um, Anytime it just, things end poorly and it's due to our own decision-making process, it's like your spirit guides are like, okay, we need to bring you another of the same until you make the right decision in the end, which is, you know, apparently what most of us have to do. Um, the master teacher, uh, sometimes when I see him, like if, I, if I'm doing cards and I see the master teacher, which is included in my Ayoshi deck, I will be like, you know, but sometimes it's really a healthy card to see because if he's showing up, he might be bringing good news that we're going to move on and you can let go of this. The master teacher is here to help our life purpose. And that's the most important thing. I mean, 
I want to know that I'm here for a reason, right? And so those are, let's see, six of the major ones. There's one more called a transient. And a transient is not necessarily a guide that's with you your entire life. And some of these aren't either. Some of them are just here for special, um, maybe some special times in our life. But I think for the most part, they are here. You know, the transients though, they come in and go. And if you're going through a really hard time in life, like like one of the biggest life challenges of your life, maybe it's, maybe it's a, a passing, a, you know, and a loss and you're grieving and you can't move on, something that keeps you stuck, the transient helps you get from one place to the other. And that's, um, you know, that's when you need to know you're not alone. All right. And, and through meditation and developing relationships with your guides and even getting readings, just so you feel like you've got a name or you feel like you've got a handle on a certain personality, um, you know, uh, is helpful. But, um, uh, and then the other one is this, this kind of extra one I was talking about is, uh, that some people believe that we either have a native American, we have a Chinese sage or an Indian guru. I've been told I have an American Indian, but you know, I never really resonated with that as much as I might have with an Indian or a Chinese, um, guide, but they're here to impart wisdom and really only when we're needing it, when we hit certain crossroads in our life and maybe it helps in the form of intuition. Um, but we don't, I don't really think I've ever learned a name for that category. Just like maybe it is your, your spirit guide of wisdom. That sounds good to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm not that picky. So, but I do feel that all together they form your council and they seem to all come in from different walks of life and some have a very strong female energy. Some seem like they have a British accent, you know, they're, and they're just from everywhere. And I often wonder why, because I don't know that they lived an earth life and I wouldn't resonate with someone, you know, from other countries that just makes sense. Right. I feel that it helps us though to identify them and the more that you connect with them and and I mean you could meditate but you could also write each one of them a letter let you know just send a note of gratitude for each one just burn them in your fire pit but together them making your counsel when you develop relationships with them you're going to be able to identify them. So I have one spirit guide named Ayoshi and, he, and people have seen him. He is huge. I don't know what, I, I never felt him resonating with a particular uh, country, but he seems like a warrior kind of a spirit. So he may be native i am not really sure he reminds me of you know remember you know the guy mr clean with the bald head and he's like he's just big <laughs> this guy's huge i don't think he has any hair you know we're a really good match right now um anyway so i know when ayoshi's around he's a very strong protector i believe he is my gatekeeper um but i sometimes i also feel he serves as my doctor philosophy at the same time but a lot of people that are very you know their gifts are out they will just say you know you have like this entourage with you I don't think I have an entourage I think I have one one very strong spirit um and then I have another one named Beverly and I don't see her that very I don't I don't feel her very often but she's um she seems British to me I don't like I hear the voice in my head you know, uh, it's not something external to me. I definitely feel this little British woman compared to that huge man. Um, you know, you're going to feel the difference, right? If you walk into a room and there's just this big booming presence, it's very much like that with the other side. 
you know, that you can't help but feel some people's energies. And same with some people's spirit energies. Anyway, I am blabbering. So the other thing, finally, I want to talk about is loved ones. Because, you know, where do they fit into this, right? They're on the other side and they are watching over us, right? I want to think so. I'm pretty sure they are. The only thing is their hands are a little tied. So if you have on your life map a certain crossroads you need to be at for certain life lesson or anything, and, and maybe it's a little bit difficult. Nobody wants us to suffer, by the way. There is not one higher spirit, not one higher entity that wants us to suffer. That's why they're here to assist us. But in the case of loved ones, they're not really guides. And they want to nudge us one way or another, and they can. Sometimes we just get signs because they're having, you know, you're having a bad day and they want you to know that it's okay, you're on track. And there's another video on signs that you could get more information um, about. But for the case of this video, um, I just want you to know that you're not alone. And I've seen little scolding grandmas going, yeah, yeah, she needs this and he needs that. And that that's like talking to their spirit guides, but you know, there's really not much we can do. And again, just like the spirit guides, the same thing. They want to inspire us, but the free will choices are ours to make and ours alone. You know, we just, I just hope that if we do get in trouble because we made crappy choices, that um, we would be right there with the, the guardian angels, you know, or, or whoever it is that's supposed to get us out of trouble. You know, I want that gatekeeper and I want that guardian angel. I, I want them to be like that, <laughs> you know, so because I, I, I have a history of getting in trouble. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm slowed down now that I'm old <laughs> and on geezer patrol. So. With that said, I'm going to close now and probably go take a nap. I want you to have a wonderful day. I want you to feel blessed. I want you to be blessed. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.